back to another video guys now that's right today we're back because doctor who series 13 episode 2 the flux war of the centaurians has aired and i'm gonna come on and talk about it today now before we get started and before we talk about the episode because this is something which i learned when i reviewed last week's episode i clearly need to state for some people that this is my opinion <laughs> this isn't fact this is me just saying what i thought the episode if you liked it and I didn't, good for you. Or if I liked it and you didn't, you know, you know, it happens. It happens. We we move on in life. Do you know what I mean? Um, but anyway, episode two of this six part episode, the, the, the Flux, War of the Centaurians. Now, I weren't a big fan of the first episode. It was a messy episode. The, the dialogue was diabolical um, and the acting weren't great. And it, it was a mess of an episode to be quite frankly honest I've I, you know I've had a week to think about it now and yeah it, it, it was a mess this week was a lot better I can sound more positive um which is good there's still problems with this episode it isn't perfect I didn't think it was great but um you know it was it was okay uh, let's start with the positives I mentioned this last week because we did see them last week and we saw them in the trailers. The design of the Centaurans is awesome you've got a very cool mix of classic Centaurans um, you know, I've watched, uh, I've been watching these classic sets as they come out, and you know, so I've seen like them with Tom Baker and stuff, and you've got that colour scheme there with some very modern, modernised style on top of them, um, from the Russell T Davis era, and I think that's great, they look fantastic. The plan, the Centaurians kind of plan in this episode, um, was pretty cool pretty interesting it felt like kind of that again russell t davis here of doctor who yeah they're going to infiltrate time and stuff you know it's very doctor who-y uh, which i thought was really cool and it just weren't as messy we weren't jumping all over the place constantly there was a bit of jumping because obviously the our three characters got separated um so we were there was a bit of bouncing back and forth but then of course um john bishop's character dan really sort of latched onto the Doctor's story, and it was just Yaz's story that was kind of separate. So it wasn't too bad. Um, I thought Dan, John Bishop, was a lot better in this episode. He was a lot more interesting. He had a bit, lot more going on. And I've got to say, Jodie Whittaker had one of the best scenes of this um, episode. She had two, two bits, actually. One of the first times I've ever laughed at her, to be honest, in this show, where um, she met Todd Santar and take his helmet off, and then she went, oh, Put, actually put it back on I like but that's one of the first times you've actually made me like kind of actually laugh Jodie to be fair because I don't really find her doctor very funny sorry to the fans for her I don't mind her as the doctor but I don't really find her funny but that's the first time around or one of the first times where I'm like uh, yeah that was all right and it's also one of the first times she seemed really in control of things when she was having that kind of meeting and she was sort of saying right the Centaurians are doing this they have to go back on their spaceships every now and then because of their suits and the gases on earth blah 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 I was like, this is the Doctor. Just, just understanding things and telling people things. You know, unfortunately throughout this era of Doctor Who, the Doctor's had a lot of instances where she's like, I don't know. I don't know that. Wow, I don't know that. What's that? I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not sure. <laughs> so it was great to see her um, do that. Also, when it looked like Dan was about to get killed, I was pretty... I thought that Space Dog had a pretty cool entrance, actually. A little bit of a badass moment there. Um, and I was pleased that they brought him back into the story. So, yeah. Overall, I actually didn't mind this episode. There was a lot more going for it. It felt more grounded. Uh, there was there was some reasoning behind the villains. And I was like, I get, you know, like there's some tyrants. I understand what they're doing. I just it didn't feel nowhere near as messy. Because we weren't jumping about near as much. <laughs> um, yeah, it was okay this fun. It was, yeah. I'd probably give it like a... Six to a seven out of ten, whereas the last one would be more like a four. So it was a lot better. This episode still comes with problems. The dialogue, it's not great at times. There are some decent moments in this episode where the dialogue's like, oh, it's, it's 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 good. There are moments where it's very rocky. Um, the effects and more. There was one moment of CGI where I just went, wow, that looks terrible. And it's when you see the Centauran army sort of marching up. Um, that was where, where the general guy sort of um, told the Doctor to bugger off and they were going to have their battle. And you see the Centauran army sort of march up. The When you see the um, British army, 
doesn't look near as bad. And I don't know if it's because of the colour schemes or because it's people. But with the Centaurans, again, I'd, it might have been the colour scheme because obviously they're on like a very um, grey um, kind of backdrop as well. But they, they looked awful. <laughs> they looked terrible. Um, so, yeah, there was that. Um, and again, I, I, I didn't really care what was going on with Yaz too much. Their story, it was like, it kept pulling me out of the whole everything that was going on with the Doctor and Dan. I know that what Yaz is doing is more vital to the story overall because this Flux thing is going to go on throughout the next four episodes. But this episode was most interesting when it was with the Centaurans. So when it cut to Dan, uh, to Yaz, sorry, and that other guy, it, it did pull me out of the episode a bit and I was a bit like, oh, I want to go back. I don't like being with Yaz. <laughs> um, so, yeah, the episode was, you know, it was actually okay. As I say, it wasn't anything great. But for this era of Doctor Who, it's definitely on the more positive. It's it's up there as one of the better episodes, actually. And that's the thing which I really love about Doctor Who. You'll get some bad episodes and you'll get some good ones. Sorry, last week's was bad, I thought. This one was good. And that's the beauty of Doctor Who. Um, so I'm excited to see next week's. I didn't actually watch the trailer, um, but I've just seen on Twitter that it looks like Cybermen. Um, the cliffhangers are so funny for these seasons of Doctor Who. Like last week when the flux was about to get them, um, it was just like the 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 TARDIS team, the TARDIS team are just not going to die. They're not. Um, and then this week is like, well, Yaz is just not going to die. She's not. Maybe in the last episode, but she's she's not going to die. What's the point of these cliffhangers? Uh, stop threatening your main characters. Do something else. Do something that where where audience was audiences will think, oh, that could happen because we know Yaz ain't going to die. Not not here anyway. But anyway, yeah, more positives about this episode. Um, yeah, pleasantly surprised. It was okay. It was decent. Um, yeah. It was alright. It wasn't too bad. <laughs> but anyway, hope you guys enjoyed as always. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, like the video, leave a message. And as always, I'll see you next time for another video. Bye-bye.